Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2021. It is uh, quite obviously 2021 now. You can tell because I have some champagne, which was used to celebrate the new year. Um, obviously, it's not open and everything, so there's some continuity issues going on, but never mind any of that. What we're doing today is the very first Probing Paul, my monthly Q&A series of 2021 for January. So uh, I'm going to be answering a bunch of questions that you guys have asked me in the comment section of previous videos. Also, we'll be answering some questions from Twitter, so uh, I'm excited. And uh, I mean, it's 2021, so obviously everything's good now, right? Nothing, nothing could have gone wrong so far. Right? Excellent! So as mentioned, I derive my questions for my Q&A series from the comments section of previous videos. So if you have questions for me to answer next month, then leave them down in the comments section below. I also asked for some questions from Twitter followers. So uh, follow me over there at Paul Hardware if you're not already. And my first question here is from Takeshi7, who's asking about some future looking stuff. It is, it is 2021, we should be talking about the future. AM5, AMD's new socket. PCIe 5.0, uh, the follow-up to PCIe 4.0. DDR5, the follow-up to DDR4, when will all of these happen? So these are all kind of tied together if you're looking at uh, like when will these be available to consumers to uh, build gaming PC PCs out of, for example. There is a little bit out there in terms of what AMD has promised and they do have a roadmap. So we're on Zen 3 right now. This is what launched at the end of 2020. This is seven nanometer stuff. This is kind of like uh, their refresh of seven nanometer from Zen 2. This is an epic roadmap for uh, server stuff, but all these products are based on the same microarchitecture so we can look at this for uh, the the desktop stuff too. Zen 4 right now, uh, fourth gen is uh, on this roadmap at least and this is from back in April of uh, 2020. It's supposed to be five nanometer although I have heard a little bit about six nanometer already and then uh, they're always very vague with these timelines as you can see it starts with 2017 it ends with 2022 and there's no hash marks or anything in between indicating when all of these will actually launch and that's because companies like AMD have stock and investors and a bunch of things, rules about what they can say when it comes to forward-looking statements. And they also like to provide themselves with a little bit of padding. So they're not promising something on some date and then they're actually gonna be held to that date when it comes to launching something when sometimes products take longer than anticipated to develop. So even though AM5 as a socket is not officially confirmed or anything like that, it's pretty reasonable to assume that AMD is working on it. We also know right now that AM4 and the current CPUs for AM4 are are pretty much going to be the last set of CPUs for that socket, barring some you know minor CPU revisions that they might come out with and that sort of thing. So when you have a platform crossover where people are gonna need to buy new motherboards in order to accommodate the new socket and these new CPUs and everything, is often a good time to also uh, transfer over to new standards, such as DDR5 for the memory and PCI Express 5.0 for connectivity for stuff through the chipset, as well as your PCIe expansion slots. PCI Express, after stagnating for a while from 3.0 to 4.0, 4.0 has made a lot of leaps forward just recently, and I've heard not just talk about PCIe 5.0, but they've already been establishing standards for PCIe 6.0 as well. So it's not outside the realm of possibility to expect a leapfrog or possibly to see one be implemented on uh, maybe desktops and one go into the server market. If you want my best educated guess as to when AMD will launch AM5 motherboards and uh, presumably new CPUs that slot into them, I would say announcements at the end of 2021 followed up by a launch at uh, probably CES 2022. And again, that's just my best educated guess. I have no solid information from anywhere on that. Next question though from Drakkar Kalathiel. Uh, do you think 11th gen will be competitive again in both price and performance? And I'm pretty sure he's talking about 11th gen core processors from Intel. So there have already been recent leaks about uh, Intel Core i9-11X products, the 11th gen core. These are still gonna be based on 14 nanometer and they're still gonna slot into LGA 1200 motherboards. Now Intel has been able to squeeze a lot of performance out of the 14 nanometer node. They've been stuck on it for quite some time and this should be the last hurrah for CPUs that are based on that manufacturing process. Intel has also shown a little bit more willingness to be more price competitive with AMD with uh, some of the sales and stuff that they've had going on at the end of 2020 with their 10 series CPUs. Trying to take advantage a little bit, I think of the fact that AMD's 5000 series CPUs have still been very difficult to actually find at retail. So if they're willing to continue to keep bringing their prices down and if they're able to squeeze just a little bit more performance out of 14 nanometer, 
then you might actually, yes, have some pretty compelling and competitive products, especially when you consider that some of the selling points for AMD are not going to be there this time around. AM4, as already mentioned, is going to be end of life. So you no longer have the argument of, hey, invest in the AMD platform because there's new generations of CPUs that will be launching and you'll have an upgrade path. An AMD 5000 series CPU with an AM4 motherboard is top of the line uh, performance for right now, but it's also probably a dead end platform. You'll also have equivalence with PCIe 4.0 support with these new CPUs from Intel, or at least that's what's promised. So I absolutely would not write off these uh, upcoming Intel CPUs, uh, the 11th gen 11900K and whatever else they might be called. Intel has definitely made some mistakes and missteps, but I think it would be uh, a mistake and a misstep to call this new series of CPUs dead in the water, and we are expecting them to launch around March of this year. Next question here from Mark Methanitis. Uh, anything else different planned for 2021? Rather enjoyed seeing your remodel videos in 2020. I enjoyed my remodel videos as well. And in fact, I wanna go back and rewatch them now that we've been living with the remodel for quite some time. I'm really happy with how our kitchen turned out and um, we've been we've been using it a lot. In fact, it, it is desperately in need of cleaning right now. When it comes to my plans for 2021 and the videos I wanna produce, there is a, there there's a bunch of videos that I was planning to follow up after the remodel with. I have an area here on the side yard that now is covered uh, that's just being used for storage right now, but I want to set it up to be sort of an outdoor work area. There's a bunch more work to be done in the living room. I have some shelves that I want to install and stuff like that. So I really like working on home DIY stuff and just improving our, our home and making things nicer or prettier or more functional. And in particular with the home theater PC and that area over there, tying the technology and the PC and everything into it as well and getting like VR setup. All of that is stuff that I was intending to sort of move forward with this year and a lot of that got put on the back burner or just put on hold because there simply wasn't enough time to do it all because in 2020 we were suddenly faced with uh, my wife and I both trying to work full-time jobs from home along with raising a one, one and a half year old daughter and uh, very limited and sporadic childcare. So yes, along with the PC builds and the tech stuff, I will be continuing work on the home improvements and I will be doing videos here and there on that stuff as it uh, moves along. In fact, because it's totally 2021 now, uh, I've, I've probably been working on a lot of that stuff in the past week or two because, you know, I took a little bit of time off there at the end of the year, but now I'm working again because it's 2021 and of course I'm back to work. So not to plan too far ahead or behind or anything like that, but maybe some of that work that I did while I was taking a little bit of time off, I did some time lapses of, and I might include in a video soon. Maybe I shouldn't have said that though, because now I'm promising something that I'm not actually gonna do. Hey, it's 2021 and we gotta just, you know, we just gotta keep moving forward. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Here's a nice straightforward question from Joe Ferriera. What is your favorite beer? Joe, that's a, a good question and uh, one that I don't have a direct answer for. If you asked me this 10 or 15 years ago, there was a beer we used to get at a pub down in Fullerton that was called Caffrey's. And I don't know if any of you guys from the UK are watching, but uh, from my understanding, Caffrey's used to be exported and it is not exported anymore. That was a cream ale. And it's possible that my tastes have changed since I really enjoyed Caffrey's, but that was always the one where I was like, oh, like I can't get it anymore. So that's why it seemed to be the one, you know, that's like the one that I don't of access to. So it's of course the one where I was like, oh, that'd be so delicious to have again. Some standout beers that I've had recently that I would totally recommend and I would uh, say are among my favorites are uh, a couple from Alesmith. I really like brown ales recently, like brown and red ales are very popular with me, but uh, Alesmith makes a nut brown, which uh, I really enjoy. Alesmith also makes a uh, Speedway Stout, which is just delicious. Of course, for that, you kind of have to be in the mood for a stout. Um, Delirium Tremens is, is just a, a consummate go-to for myself and Kyle. We have that regularly and it's always delicious. And uh, you know, these are a little difficult to find, but if you can get your hands on one, uh, definitely try some Pliny the Elder. This question from Pure Track 6 was just a little random, but I kind of liked it. Uh, anyway, does jumping to certain timestamps affect the revenue stream of a video versus watching the entire video? I've been doing timestamps for most of my videos. This video should have timestamps so you can jump to the question that you want to. I love videos that have the timestamps on them, so I include them in my own because I figure if somebody doesn't want to watch the part they're watching, maybe they want to watch the part that's a few minutes later and they might want to know where that is. Now, part of this question is uh, figuring out the YouTube algorithm, and that is something that you 
you just can never really do because YouTube's algorithm constantly changes and updates. They don't want people to know exactly what the algorithm is looking for or exactly the things that the algorithm picks out and says, yes, that makes that a good video and that's why we should show it to everyone. There are metrics for videos such as watch time and engagement. And uh, you know, if you have a 10 minute video and most people watch just a couple minutes of it, that's gonna be relatively low watch time. Whereas if you have a 10 minute video and people are watching seven or eight minutes of it on average, then YouTube is gonna look at that and be like, people are enjoying this video and they're watching more of it. So things like that might affect how the YouTube algorithm treats any given video and it might uh, rank it higher when it comes to feeding it to people through their recommendations or lower if the metrics for whatever stat you're looking at are lower. If you're talking purely about revenue, well, I think that just boils down to, did you watch an ad at the beginning of the video or people do mid rolls too. I don't, I don't do mid rolls. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. I hate mid rolls, so I only do the beginning of the video ads. But if YouTube served you an ad and you watch just a few seconds at the beginning before you clicked skip, that counts as an impression. Or if you watch the entire ad, I think that counts as like more of a quality ad view. And that is what affects the creators getting paid, at least when you talk about getting paid from YouTube via YouTube ad revenue. So that is what would affect it, not necessarily jumping to a specific timestamp in the video. Next question from Ivar's P. Paul, what is that gorgeous looking keyboard on your table? I'm guessing you mean this one. This is a Cooler Master MK850 and uh, it is it is a nice keyboard. Uh, I like this keyboard. This one has Cherry MX red caps and I prefer the reds or the browns because they don't make a clicky sound. I don't like the clicky sound. But yeah, it's a full size keyboard. It's got RGB. It's got dual rollers up here for volume and uh, you can assign the other one to something else. Not that I've actually done that. Some media controls, a nice overall finish. And this one is the special Paul's hardware edition. I have a Paul's hardware keycap there that has replaced, what is that? Oh, that's the alt button. That's the, I can use the alt button there to control, use the controls up here for the RGB and stuff. I did a video on this back at the beginning of 2019, if you guys wanna check it out. One of the fancy things about it is it's got analog keys, pressure sensitive keys for not all of the keys, but the keys around the QWERTY area. And in the video, I demoed that by uh, trying it out with some super hot. I think I won. I think I won that. Question from Sadman1471, non-computer related question. I think you've answered this before, but who does all the cooking in your house? So there's only two possible answers, myself and my wife, because uh, my daughter is only about one and a half years old and she's not old enough to cook yet. If you had asked me this like before 2020, I probably would have said that uh, I do a little bit more cooking and then my wife cooks as well sometimes, but it's pretty close. Like I would, I would have said maybe like 60, 40 or something like that. This year, although we have had the new kitchen to cook in, we have also had way less time available for that sort of thing. So we have been patronizing our local restaurants that are doing takeout uh, with a fair degree of regularity. We have course wanted to make sure that our local restaurants stay in business so uh, getting the takeout is helpful because it just saves a bit of time from the cooking and the cleanup afterwards process but to get back to your question uh, truly and honestly and sincerely I, I couldn't say exactly who does more cooking or less cooking sometimes my wife cooks and I'll watch the baby and sometimes I will cook and she'll watch the baby and and yeah we trade off which is nice because sometimes you want to cook and sometimes you don't want to cook and one last question here from filmmaker freak more cream pie videos win. Uh, so uh, Thanksgiving 2020, I did a how to make a chocolate cream pie video, which is which is obviously one of the best videos on my entire YouTube channel. So go watch that if you wanna learn how to make a chocolate cream pie. The pies turned out delicious. I usually only make pies around the holidays, but um, you always are looking for a good reason to make pie and cream pie is obviously some of the best kind of pie. You just wanna stuff it in your face until it gets everywhere pretty much. So uh, I absolutely have been hearing you guys when it comes to the demand for for additional cream pie videos. And uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get some more of those onto the schedule, onto the calendar for 2021. Because like I said, it's 2021 now. Obviously I wouldn't have this champagne if the uh, situation were otherwise. So I'm gonna wrap up this video. I would like to say a big old happy new year to all of you guys. I, I really hope that this year goes a bit better than last year, even if it's just marginally better. I think that would still be a win. So uh, thank you guys for your continued support. I will be back to my regular video making schedule next week. I got a build planned as well as lots of other stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and I will be doing another Q&A very soon. So leave me some questions down in the comment section below and uh, perhaps I will answer them in the next Probing Paul. Thank you so much for watching once again and we'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>